That was good. It's good. It's a really good um, so balance between upper body and wrist. It was just a big side spinner, that one. So if you noticed it skidded on, yeah, that's because we didn't have enough of the top spin. All right, now go big leggy because you've just gone wrong and good. That slip out of touch. It's all right. Nice. Real good. Go to the stock ball. Stock ball. Beautiful. That's such a good combination of. Flight, bounce, and turn. Really good. Yep. All right, so how... Will, how hard are you trying to spin that? So out of 100%? Oh, probably 70. Okay. See if you can ramp it up to 85 without increasing your upper body speed through the crease. So this all stays the same, I just want this to get to 85%. Yeah. yeah. Good. Stock ball. That's it, beautiful. That's money, that feel good? Yeah, exactly. That's what we're after. Yeah, that's another belter. So as soon as... <clears throat> the more revs you can put on the ball and be balanced and controlled, the better. And the way for you, the way you do that, is by keeping this quiet and just really emphasising that. Because the last two that you just bowled there, like even when they hit my hands, like you could tell there was more fizz in it. And you could see that the flight was stronger as well. So it was stronger, but it still dipped and drifted. So, you know, <clears throat> yeah, the, the, the more revs we can put on it whilst being balanced is just the currency to really good balls. All good. Nice. All right, rip out a couple of toppies with that same thing, 85%. Good. Did you feel, what did that feel like? Yep. So use your wrist to rip it down. So you, you kind of guided it a little bit with your body, that one there. So you still feel like this stays the same. So nice and tall and... Um, sort of quiet or passive, and it's your wrist that flicks over the top. Better. So even with your wrong and like it's not, it's your wrist that changes. So we don't want to go from here with our leggy and then our wrong and like this. One, you're throwing yourself off balance and two, like it's super easy to pick. You know, you don't have to, you, it's just the, just the wrist that changes. So back to the stock ball. That's right. Stock ball. Beautiful. Good, good. That's beautiful. So can you feel the difference like as you let go of it in the quality of release? <clears throat> so can you explain to me what feels different between a good release and a not good release? It feels like kind of snaps or fizzes yeah. out of the hand. Yeah, like off the, off the spinning finger? Yeah, cool. So see if you can like hang on to that feeling whilst the especially when we're trying to spin it harder, because you, you want to spin it harder and, and sort of try and recreate that flick or that fizz. <coughs> Ow. 
is good. Upper body sped up a little bit there. Good. So that's a, that's a prime example where the upper body races too far ahead and you were super open when you delivered that and that's why it came out the front of your hand. So let's wind it back a little bit and just think, remember this is nice and quiet. And so by quiet, what we're trying to achieve is this to stay more side on for longer. Okay, so... Some people prefer to feel like they leave their back to the target for a bit longer. Some feel like they want to keep their lead shoulder pointed at the target for longer. <clears throat> so essentially what we're trying to do is keep you side on for longer. So you let go of it and then rotate. So we get into trouble when this upper body races ahead and then we've got no option but to push it out the front of the hand. Otherwise if we're open and we rip over the top, it's going to hit the side net. So just... <clears throat> The thoughts are now is quiet and side on for as long as you can, but still trying to spin it nice and hard. Good. Good. Nice. There you go, that's a time that well. All right, how are you feeling? Do you want to add a few steps on? Do you want to add a few steps on? Feeling right? So I reckon an ideal length is about there. So all we're trying to do now is with our run up is just keep this feeling like it's secondary to this. So the emphasis is that while this stays nice and quiet and we've got the momentum of our run up and we'll see what that looks like. That was real nice. Rapid. Slow it down and focus on the flick out of the hand. <clears throat> yeah, better. Good. Nice. Nice, nice. Good. Good. So talk to me about how that one felt different to the ball before. Yep. It just didn't feel right. What that one then didn't feel right. Okay. It was a touch full. But I, what I liked about it is that it went up out of your hand. So it was a tiny bit full, but that was one that had a little more topspin on it. And the initial, initial thing that happened um, was the ball went up out of your hand instead of the ones before kind of just sort of went straight, like flat to down, which didn't have like that initial... Because when you're a batter, you see the ball coming up out of your hand. That's what like draws them to come forward. Whereas like, so you could say hypothetically, you've got a batter here, right? You could still be pitching it really full, but if your trajectory is really flat, their initial reaction is to go back anyway. So, um, what, get, so what gets a batsman coming forward is not necessarily the length of the ball, it's the trajectory and the flight. So, you know, we can still get a batsman coming forward and I can land the ball halfway, by going like that. You know, they see the ball up in the air. The first thing they want to do is come down the wicket. So what, what we want to do is promote sort of that, that initial up out of the hand first. So let's do that. 
by trying to bowl those stock balls or a combination of the top and side spin. That's it. That's proper. So you feel that? Yeah. Pretty good. Not quite as good as the one before, but pretty good. That went out and I'm it's dragging me forward. That's what we want. Good speed and flight through the air as well. Nice. Couple more of them. It's alright, good. So when you're practicing this well, don't like don't be put off if you bowl a couple that are slightly too full. Because that's what we're promoting. We're promoting a more flighted ball. Good. How hard are you spinning those? Okay, ramp it up to 85 or 90. So I want like really solidly spun stock ball. So that combination of both, top spin and side spin. Yep. Good. So that one was much better because it was that combination of top spin and side spin and spun hard. It was good, it's good. So really good, um, so balance between upper body and wrist, it was just a big side spinner that one. So if you noticed it skidded on, yeah, that's because we didn't have enough of the top spin. So let's flip the script, let's go. 85, 90% spun toppies. Good, keep working on it. Good ball. Not a toppy, but <laughs> it's all right though. That's why we're here working on it, mate. All right, come have a look at this quickly. So that's your toppy. Can't really see from here, but your grip chain, or the way you hold your hand and your wrist is different, so you're not loading it up the same, so I can tell that you're really thinking about the top spinner. Whereas when you bowl, I think this is a leggy. See how much more confident that load up is? So you're like really like, boom, there. So it's the same deal with your toppy, but you're kind of like thinking like, you know what I mean? So you still got to really load it up and then just aggressively, so you're still flicking the same, all you're doing is flicking more completely over the top of the ball as opposed to like flicking to the side of the ball. So load it up the same and give it a good rip. Much better. So I know it kind of feels counterintuitive like when you're not confident with something and you, you, you want to sort of go tentative and go slow. But it's quite often the case if you commit to it, the result's better, even though it's a bit scary because it feels like it's out of control. But that's why we practice these things in a controlled environment like this instead of like being mid-game and go, I'll try to bowl a toppy and then end up bowling a chest eye fully. Same again, give it a big rip. All good? It's fine. So the feeling is... A little bit fuller. Feeling is where rip, like the toppy ripping over the top of the ball and ripping down onto there. So the crucial part is we have to rip over the top then down. We don't want to go straight down. Good. So it's a, a rip over the top. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that's the commitment we you need when you're bowling your toppy. Nice. Nice, nice. So that was a full top you, but see like the natural variation there, because that hit the seam like it decked 
and it bounces. So that's a lethal delivery. Like, because people, like, they look at it, they see the seam, they go, oh, that's a toppy. Then it does just enough, bounces just enough, maybe gets a shoulder of the bat or a glove, and it's such a hard ball to play. Top draw, top draw. Okay, if we're being super picky, we could just slow, slow our speed through the crease a little bit more while maintaining our wrist speed. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy life to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you got some value, please subscribe below, hit subscribe to our channel. We, we try and publish some really interesting and valuable content for you guys, so subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out our next two videos here below. Make sure you subscribe and also turn on post notifications and join the CM community by purchasing some merchandise. Link is in the description below. Thanks legends, now go out and get it done.